2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. First and foremost, only give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Thanks, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here, for, forbear. This is our job, is to prophesy. Once again, give you warning of things that's going to come. Look, before it even comes, the same thing Noah did. And, 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 it, and it always comes. Because these aren't our words. These are the words that, what the scriptures say, that are faithful and true. The words that I'm reading right about now are faithful and true. Meaning, meaning when they go out, they don't go out void. They don't go out void, man. Let's, 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 let's go once again. Second Ezra chapter 15. So the, so the Israelites that are not taking heed, you're going to get caught up in the storm. You know, you don't, you don't supposed to ignore prophecy, Israel. You got Israelites ignoring prophecy. That, that's not a good look for you. You can't run from prophecy. Once again, 2 Ezra 15, verse 1. Behold, which means to look. Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Let them know that destruction is coming. Let them know that war is coming. Let them know that the enemy is going to come in like a flood. Let them know, man. That's, that's our only job, to let them know. Let them know. Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. And call them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. These words are faithful and true. L let's see what happens when you don't believe in the words that are faithful and true. This is um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 11, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusions. So, so Yahweh Bashim Yahweh sent our people strong delusions, meaning when they hear a lie, they believe it. But when they hear the truth, they think it's a lie. Ain't that some? When they hear a lie, the, the Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, two thirds of them, when they hear a lie, guess what? They think it's the truth. And when they hear the truth, yeah, you guessed it. They think it's a lie, right? The Most High gave them over to strong delusions, right? And that's going on right now. As I make this video, I'm looking right at the news. The majority of our people are believing in this lie. You see? Every lie that Sleazy E, Esau, Edom throw to them, they believe it. But anytime we come straight out the Bible, they don't believe it. They think it's a lie. We coming straight out the Bible, right? That's the Lord giving them strong delusions. Look, look, that they should believe a lie. And, and that they all might be damned, condemned, who believe not the truth. Remember, the truth shall set you free. So, so two-thirds of our people have been condemned because they don't believe prophecy. They don't believe what the scriptures are telling them is coming before it even comes. Look, just like in Noah's times. And, ain't nothing new. Just like in Noah's times. Just like when Lot was trying to tell his family members. That fire was coming. That destruction was coming. The ones that didn't take heed, guess what? Guess what happened? Yeah, you, you guessed it. They died, man. They got burnt to a crisp. You see what happens when you don't believe in the truth? Consequences, man. Let's read on. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So while we bringing out the truth, starting off with the head apostle slash elder bishop of Great Millstone, our people are taking pleasure and unrighteousness, wickedness, when the truth is being spoken throughout the four corners of the earth. And these words are faithful to the truth. You, you see what happens when you don't believe in the truth? You, you, look, you, you die, man. You die. They believe in lies. They don't believe in the truth. So the end result is death. Let's, let's go back. Second Ezra is the 15th chapter. Verse 3. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity, meaning the unbelief of them, trouble thee that speak against thee. And, and yeah, we, we don't let the incredulity, the unbelief, the people that don't believe, we're not even worried about it. Let's go. For all the unfaithful shall die in the unfaithfulness. And, and the Lord wants it to go that way. That's why he has given them, once again, over to strong delusions. So no matter what lie is being spoken, no matter what lie is being promoted, no matter what lie comes on the TV, guess what? Our people are going to believe in it. It's true. So what if some don't believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? 
Just because they don't believe, is that going to stop the provinces from coming? Is that going to stop the economy from crashing? You got our people trusting in Bitcoin, trusting in um, crypto, and all this other nonsense. You know, ain't nothing wrong with them doing a little bit of investing. But this is this is Babylon. And you know, Babylon is going to be destroyed. And all its ways and all its philosophies and all its dogma is going to be destroyed too. Real soon. It is for all the unfaithful shall die in the unfaithfulness. Behold, save the Lord. I will bring plagues upon the world. So why are you getting ready for New Year's and why are you getting ready for Christmas? The Lord got his eyes set on destroying this place, man. All right? Say so he's going to bring plagues upon this world. The sword, which represents destruction, famine, death, and destruction. But oh yeah, you up on the strong delusions that everything's going to be okay. The Lord said he's going to bring vengeance upon this place. But you're under the impression that everything's going to get better. But, but it's not. He says, for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Ain't nothing but a bunch of Travis Scott's running around. Demons everywhere. And the Lord's going to melt every last one of you soon. Come, man, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful to see you. How about Shemia? I I finally get rid of two-thirds two of y'all. And you wicked heathens, man. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Let the multitude perish that was born in vain, man. That's why, that's why once again, the scripture tells us to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Matter of fact, I get that. I get that. Everybody telling you love is coming, peace is coming. What, what is the Lord telling you? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, because destruction is coming. Not peace, destruction is coming. Not love, not hugs, destruction is coming, right? Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. Come out of that dead state, come back to your nationality, Israel. It's, it's time. It's time. And Yahweh shall give thee light, which is this word. And we need this light to make it through all this darkness, man, to see through all this darkness. You need that flashlight, right? Our people walking around blindly, you know what I'm saying, just reaching at the air, you know what I'm saying? Not, not knowing what's in front of them, right? It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, meaning you got to be looking around at what's going on, paying attention, not as fools. But of course you're going to walk around like a fool if you're up on the strong delusions. If the Lord has given you the spirit of slumber. Eyes that you shall, you shall not see and ears that you should not hear until this day. So you, you most definitely ain't going to figure out what's going on until it's too late. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. See, see we already know. The Lord said these things are coming to pass. So we, we already know. We are, look, we, we already know. Going to get it together. Get it together. Let's get second Ezra, the um, 16th chapter. Going to get it together and keep it together. Second Ezra chapter 16, Abaratazah, through the spirit of you have. By Shemiah Rashad, right? Remember, woe to them they call, call good evil and evil good. Second Ezra chapter 16, I'm going to just hit some points right quick. And then I'm going to wrap it up. Let's see. 17. Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. Who would deliver me in those days? Destruction, destruction, and more destruction. That's what the prophet had. That's the vision that the prophet was given, right? Of the end times of this place being annihilated, right? The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. But you, once again, you up on the strong delusions that everything is going to be okay. Israelites are actually up under the strong delusions that everything's. Look, look, even though they see all these things coming down the pipeline, they still believe that it's going to get better, man. Out there shopping right now for Christmas gifts and. New Year's Eve balloons and all that and birthday cards and all that. The Lord like, man, you better go to the house of mourning instead of the house of feasting. You, you most definitely going to get caught off guard. If you're still in the house of mourning, in the house of mirth, instead of the house of mourning, you're going to get caught off guard. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. Because tribulation is coming. Evil surrounds us, man. The beginning of famine, a lack of food, and great death. The begin a whole lot of dead bodies gonna be everywhere. This is what the Lord is saying. A whole lot of dead bodies gonna be everywhere. Remember, woe to woe to the city that is filthy and polluted, to the oppressing city. Oh yeah, and then the scriptures say, um, all those that reject knowledge are gonna be rejected. Remember Israel. It says, um, 
the beginning of wars, yeah, World War Three. And look, this is our job is to prophesy of it. The beginning of wars. You, and you look, Israel, you're not going to hear these scriptures in church, all right? You just, it's just not going to happen. And the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, meaning bad times, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for protection. Because we got the angels that kept around us because we fear the Lord, right? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges. It, the, everything is happening to, to whip you Israelites into shape, but you're not, you're not taking heed. It says, for a minute, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the score. So no matter how bad it gets, our people say, what? The evil shall not overtake them, nor prevent us. Let's get that. Let's go on and get that. Go straight to Amos. You know. Our people saying no matter how bad it gets, they're going to still be partying and drinking, having fun. Amos chapter 9, verse 10. All the sinners, sin is transgression of the law. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which, which the sword represents destruction, represents sleazy he coming in like a madman. You know what I'm saying? That nuclear fire. It, everything that I've been naming, the famine, race wars, class wars, civil wars, that's all part of the sword, right? It's going to catch our people, even though they think everything's going to be all lovely for them, right? All the sinners, every last one of them, of my people, the Hebrew Israelites, shall die by the sword which say the evils shall not overtake nor prevent us, meaning the bad times. Because why? They up on a strong delusions. Up on a strong delusions, man. That's, that's what's going on. Our people are up on a strong delusion. Ain't even thinking about seeking the Lord. With everything that the Lord just named, according to the Bible, ain't none of them seeking. But look, though, the scriptures say when they, when they perish, when they die, when, when none of them innocent. No, no matter man, woman, or child, let's get this. Job 4, 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent. Who? The word perish means to die, you know what I'm saying? Whoever perish being innocent. It says, um, oh, where were the righteous cut off? If you're doing the right thing, you ain't got to worry about getting cut off. You fearing your how about Shema you ain't got to worry about getting cut off. The Israelites, they get cut off. They was wicked, man. They weren't innocent. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, sin upon sin, wickedness, and sow wickedness, reap the same. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Just a quick quick um, warning through the spirit of how I bust you I got two more scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up. I'm kind of pressed for time. Got off to a late start this morning, but it's all good. As long as something go out. That's all that matter. As long as some go out. Second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter 7. Verse 20. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of the Most High that is set before them. The word perish means to die. Remember, we just read that. Whoever perished being innocent, aware where the righteous cut off, our people despise this word. We bring out the lessons each and every day. They despise it. So the Lord said, because you despise this word, you're going to perish soon, come man. You're going to be consumed, Israel. The Israelites that don't turn back, look, you, you're going to be consumed. Let's get this. This is on Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsake the weight, and he that hateth reproof shall die. The Israelites, they hated to be corrected. They didn't take heed to the one. They're going to die soon come, according to the Bible. Not word, not my words, but the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Let's see. Oh, yeah, I want to read this. Proverbs 14 and 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The elect of the children of Israel are going to have a place to hide. Where's that place of hiding? In this word. Two-thirds, they have nowhere to hide. Because correction is grievous unto them. And remember, he that hated reproof shall die. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Fearing the Lord, man. Look, man, that's protection all day. 
There's protection all day. Fearing the Lord is protection all day. But guess what? Our people are under strong delusion, so they're not going to run to the Lord. They, they, our people ain't even thinking about the Lord. So basically, this lesson is only for the elect. We prophesy. We let them know what's going to happen before it happens. Just keep doing your job. Shalom.